We're back on the red, and I tell you what, for a lot of people, the Red River is just trivia. It's a state line between Minnesota and North Dakota. It always amazes me how many anglers don't realize what's out here. This is one of the best places in the, in the whole country if you want to target channel catfish. And the reason being is that this is a great area for trophy channel catfish. If you want a fish that'll bend a rod and just leave you sore, this is the place. And with me today is a river rat by the name of Josh Burgett. We've filmed with him before. Very, very knowledgeable river rat. Knows these catfish inside and out and knows how to fish this river. We're gonna share a few things on how to fish this river during low water periods on today's show. A lot of the places that you fish in spring or early summer are high and dry in, in terms of structure like uh, log jams and even holes that are uh, next to the steep and cut banks. So we're just, we're focusing on the main channel more so and fishing holes and sunken logs that are as, as deep of water as you can find. Is on there, now. Yep. there we go. Nice. Well, it doesn't look that bad. Oh, that's, nice. a, that's a heavy fish. Nice. Fish was latched onto it and <laughs> grabbing it for a while. I love this. These fish just fight so hard in that current, don't they? Yes, they do. This other rod here has got a fish I thought that working one was it too. Cool first. Yeah. See if we can get her up here where we can see it. Yep. Yeah, they, they are just bulls in this current, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fight is what this is all about. I mean, this is just, you know, river monsters. <laughs> What's unique though is this is, oh, early August. And, you know, despite how high the water was this spring, the water's really low. And so that's changed the pattern. We're focusing on a lot of channels, deeper holes, faster water. Where is it? Yeah. Actually, look at this. There, you got it. Yep. There. That's a, that's a good fish. That's a nice way to start off right there. But no, isn't that something, you know, a lot of times on rivers you're thinking current breaks, or in this right. case you're looking for that fast water, that main channel, that water's going to be a lot more oxygenated come late summer, and in low water conditions, that's the ticket a lot of times, but yeah, yeah, we'll get that fish in the water, but yeah, isn't that a cool fish? Whoa, I got a bath there. <laughs> As water temperatures climb on river systems, especially during the low flows, Fish of all species often concentrate on stretches of river that are straight with fast current. These long, sometimes shallow stretches of river with faster current are referred to as runs and are often highly oxygenated. With warmer water temperatures and increased metabolism, it can be common for river fish to hold in some of the strongest and fastest current by late summer. Besides long runs, other good summer locations can include the primary channel and long river holes that feature stronger current. Yeah, there, oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, there, there we go. go. Good fish, good fish, good fish. Get them out, there we go. Fish. Is that and something a circle hook pretty much does the work, but. There you go, get the get that rod up, yeah. uh, lift them up off of those. There snags. we go. Don't know how big it is. Sometimes these small fish can pull pretty hard, but yeah. it can fool you in this current. I haven't really even caught up to this fish yet. Now he knows I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> you see him. Mm -hmm. Boy, look at that, just the He's power like, these I fish have. Just that, that run. Cool? Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a dandy. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. I just love that. Yeah, just look at the power these things have. Just brutes. There we go. Thank you. Yes. yes. No. Get her out of the net here. That's a that's a big girl too. Yeah. 
Yeah, that circle hook gets them right on the corner of the mouth, which is crucial. I mean, this is basically a trophy fishery. I mean, that's, these are some of the, I mean, this is just a great area for big catfish. So it's important to let these fish go. And that's why we're using the circle hooks, just effective and high release rate, low mortality. But there's a lot of different, a lot of different baiting options. We've been experimenting with a little bit of everything, haven't we? We've got suckers out, we've got water dogs out, we've got cut gold eye out. Gold eye are native to the river. That's probably one of the reasons these catfish get so big, but both these last fish came on gold eye. That's, you were talking earlier, that's been one of your go-to baits. Yep, uh, before uh, they bulk up for fall, um, they, they will do like a pre-gorging and anything that's really high protein for them, you know, oily, uh, like your gold eye. Leopard frogs are obviously really good in the fall when these frogs, you know, migrate back yep. into the water. But you often made a comment too that you like to use amphibians anytime after a heavy rain. I don't know, I guess in my opinion, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but um, it holds true that when it, before it rains, during a rain or shortly after a rain, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm just guessing that the frogs and water dogs and other amphibians just kind of you know, fall down the, what do you call them, the landslides or whatever. The bank, and then, yeah. Yep, and then the waiting catfish just sit and just nail them. Yeah. On the Red River, catfish truly are a top of the line predator that is amazingly efficient at finding prey in this turbid and dark environment. Red River catfish grow to enormous proportions because of a rich forage base that includes population of gold eye and suckers. For big fish, fresh cut bait works extremely well. Catfish have an amazing sense of smell and barbells that actually allow them to taste an object before they eat it. Got him? Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Look at the power. <laughs> Don't you just love that? Yes. Wow. That's a good fish, isn't it? Yeah. Look he at hit that. like it was four pounds. <laughs> that is cool. A lot of people don't realize what's out there. No. Do they? <laughs> this is some great fishing. I want to see this beast. Yeah. Is that rod okay or should I move it? No, it's fine. Wow, look at that. Wow, that is a huge fish. That's a huge fish. Wow. What should I go right here? Uh, I don't know, wherever you can get it. That is a huge fish. You know, the other thing we should probably touch on too is just the milk run. You know, we've been just bouncing around from spots to spots and small, small moves. Um, just repositioning yourself, you know, because most of these holes, uh, you know, you're, you're limited to the to the number of holes that you can that you're, you're able to find, and wow, uh, so sometimes just that's going cool. on the upstream side, the downstream side, hitting or, the sides, or, the yep. middle. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, a lot of times we've made moves. I'm just gonna let yep. you wear them out a little bit. Yep. We've made moves where we don't even pull the anchor up. We just drag it the anchor with the big motor. And yeah. just move 50 yards and that's a big fish. Yeah. There nice. we go, we got her. Nice. All right, nice work there. That's a, that's a dandy there. Very nice. Wow, look at that. That is a dandy. There, wow. Awesome. Isn't that a beaut? Yeah, very nice. Look at all muscle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice work. The Red River of the North is one of the few rivers in the United States that runs true north, eventually emptying into the Hudson Bay. Catfish have swam this river for tens of thousands of years. And what surprises some anglers is that before the last ice age, the Red River actually flowed south into the Missouri River and Mississippi River watersheds. And this is how catfish came to be in the Red River. After the glaciers retreated, the Red River reversed course and began to flow north. The catfish, however, remained. Early budget. Well. 
Then I made a long cast with that one. Deal with the way these fish dig in this current, you just gotta wedge that rod in your stomach and hang on, don't you? That's right. The shark belt. <laughs> yeah, shark belt. This fish here doesn't even really know what's going on yet. He's just kind of swimming. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to start fighting here pretty soon, though. Let's see here. I think I'm out of that other line. Can you see that other line? Ah, uh, you're go on the other side of the rod. OK, there you go. There we go. All right. There you go. Now this is going to get interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm just using just a Berkeley big game rod. I love these rods for circle hooks. Josh is just using some ugly sticks, but that's the beauty of this is you don't need expensive gear. No. Just fiberglass rod and a stout rod holder. Yep. Just you got a 30 pound bionic braid on there for the main line and oh yeah. Line, line kind of trumps the rod, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, you just need something that won't break. Yep. <laughs> Foam handles, because your hands are going to be covered with fish slime and scales. And... Get over there here. We there we go. Nothing wrong with that fish, either. Off there, but yeah, solid fish, hard fighting fish. Get that in the water there. Cool, cool. Now the program's pretty simple. We're using cut bait, and it's important to use fresh bait, change your bait often. And we touched on the circle hook as far as just hooking the fish in the corner of the mall, so you just release these fish with low mortality, but short snell in this current. Yeah, that's probably about what, uh, probably a 13 inch snell or so. That's just a three ounce no roll sinker. You can get away with lighter sinkers. Josh is using a pyramid style sinker. You just want something that just sticks down in the mud and you don't want a weight that tumbles down current where it'll get you into snakes because there are a lot of snags out here. But that's the program right there. Just anchor up, up current where you expect these fish to be and let the scent from that cut bait drip that down through that hole. These fish move up and, and latch on. But the biggest thing though is when you see a fish tapping on these circle hooks, is just let the rod holder do the job. You'll see that rod tip bouncing, 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 and finally it'll load up. Wait till it loads up because if you try setting the hook traditionally with these circle hooks, you're just gonna lose a lot of fish. And so let the rod holder do the work, but very high hooking percentage and just a very effective way to catch these catfish. Got him? Yep. All right. How does he feel? Feels pretty good. Oh, <laughs> look at that rod. Isn't that something? I just hope he doesn't get hung up. Kind of reminds me of saltwater fishing. <laughs> <laughs> This rod in your way? Yeah, probably. Yep. Straight up here. Swimming towards the boat. Nice fish, huh? Yep. All right. It's amazing how tur turbid this water is. A lot of times people think this water is polluted, but actually it's a very clean river, just the sediment load, you can't see into the water at all. So whenever you can see that weight for the first time, then things get a little bit more exciting, don't it? You're working over there, aren't you? Just... Wow, look at that, look at that. Wow. <laughs> you catch the big ones. <laughs> Thank you. Tell you what. It's always a pleasure coming out here and fishing with you. Thank you. I always learn a lot about river fishing and about catfish. You're kind of a, it's a yeah, whole different a, deal then. 
Oh, you're a true river rat. It's a pleasure fishing with you. Thank you. Tell you what, I got uh, pliers right back here. There we go. These are quality fish, aren't they? Hear them, hear them growling. <laughs> Oh, it's neat, neat fishing experience. I wish more people could get out here and try this because this is really something that's cool. I love this. And I think more and more people are doing it, but not nearly enough. That's no. just a cool fishing opportunity that's right under a lot of people's noses. Nice work. We'll get that fish back. Yep. Wow. We got a rot fish on the rod. Big one at that. Oh, wow. This is a big fish, Josh. This is a really big fish. Yeah. Wow. This might be the biggest fish I've had on all day. Nice. Looks like some dead weight there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is. Wow. 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 There you go. Look at Love that. the extension of the arm. <laughs> Gotta respect the extension. <laughs> yeah. How could anybody not enjoy this? It's funny, you know, all these people in Grand Forks and Fargo, you know, they're always coming to Devil's Lake yeah. or Lake of the Woods or wherever to go fishing and they've got this right underneath their noses. When it rains, it pours, huh? Pretty much. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do there, make room. My arms are starting to get sore. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Boy, just want to see ya. Mm -hmm. Just want to. Almost. Come on. Wow. Impressive. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> you know, we, did, we didn't even, we couldn't gotta... even see that fish until yeah. it was in the net. Oh, good, good work, <laughs> my friend. Yes. Wow, look at this. That's a thing. This, this, uh, this catfish looks so old that he's probably here when the last mammoths <laughs> walked across here. <laughs> wow, look at this thing. Oh. Wow. Jeez, that's a, that's a good fish. That is a big boy. Look at this. Look Put at all this. All guys in the fishing cats <laughs> incredible tournament are after. <laughs> That is a monster. Wow. Nice. Got lots of leeches on him there. Yeah, think of how old this fish is though. You know, just probably I'd say close to 15 years. Yeah, that fish has got the battle scars. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna release this fish here right away. That is cool. Wow. Nice. Look at that. Oh. That was awesome. <laughs> that was a good one. That was nice. <laughs>